Hello and welcome to part two of Virtual Instruments and Mixcraft. I'm your host Cameron and in this video we're going to be covering recording and editing virtual instrument performances inside of Mixcraft. In part one we covered how to add virtual instrument tracks, change instruments, configure your MIDI controller, and how to use Mixcraft's included musical typing keyboard. So if you haven't seen that, you'll want to pause this video now and check that out before moving on. With that out of the way, I am sure you are on the edge of your seat, totally white knuckled and excited to record your first virtual instrument performance, and I am too, so let's do it. To begin recording our first virtual instrument performance, it's very similar to recording audio tracks. So we'll begin by finding the track we want to record. First up, I want to do my drums here. I'll arm the track. Then we can select record down here in the transport bar or press R on our keyboard. Let's begin by recording our first virtual instrument performance with the drums. Right on, it's always fun to play drums, isn't it? So let's begin by unarming the track as we won't be recording on it anymore. As you could probably hear, things were slightly in and out of time throughout that performance. Due to the software I used to record these videos, I experienced pretty high latency, which if you remember to our quick start guide refers to the delay between me doing something and hearing it back. So this makes it a bit tricky for me to perform parts exactly in time when I'm recording videos like this. However, it's no big deal because we have all sorts of tools inside of Mixcraft we can use to edit and correct our performance. To begin editing our virtual instrument performance, we'll double click the top of the clip here. That will open the piano roll editor down here in the bottom window. We can expand this by dragging the center bar up and now we can see everything. As you can tell, things are maybe a bit small and hard to see at this point. So we can go over here to the right and scroll up so we can see all of the parts. Then over here in the left hand side, we can use the different zoom tools to zoom in. We can expand our view vertically with the magnifying glasses here, and we can expand horizontally with the arrow tools here. Now that we've zoomed in quite a bit, we could take a closer look at the first bar of this performance to get a better idea of what we're dealing with. As you can see indicated by these grid lines, some notes are a bit early, some are a bit late, and in general things could just use a bit of tidying up. To quickly get our performance in time rather than editing every single note by itself, we can use a function called quantize. Quantizing snaps all of these notes to a given grid value, which makes it an incredibly fast way to get your performances perfectly in time. To access that, we'll go up here to the top and select MIDI editing. Then we'll select quantize. This will open the quantize window, which has quite a few functions, but we'll only need to worry about the note type for right now. If we open up the note type, you can see all of the different note values available. In my case, my performance consists of mostly 8th and 16th notes, so I'll use 16th notes in this case. Generally speaking, the best way to find what value you should use is what is the smallest value in your performance. In my case, it's 16th notes, so that's the best way to go. So for example, if your performance consists of mostly quarter notes, but has a few 8th notes, you'll go with 8th notes instead. We can select 16th notes here, and these settings in the middle we won't need to worry about as we'll be covering all of the advanced features of the MIDI editor later. Now that we've got that all set, we can click OK. And as you can see, Mixcraft has now snapped all of these perfectly in time. If we zoom out, we can see Mixcraft has actually corrected the entire performance in one go, which makes it a very fast way to do this. Let's take a listen to the final quantized performance now that everything's in time. Awesome, so everything is now in time, but you could probably hear there was one note where I hit a tom drum instead of a snare. Let's go ahead and fix that now. We'll click over here to bar 8 and then zoom in. Alright, so as we could see here on beat 2, I hit a tom instead of a snare, so we need to move this to the correct note. In this case, the snare drum is the note E, and I accidentally hit the note F, so we need to move this down in order to get it on the right value. 
To begin editing our MIDI performance by moving notes, we can go up here to the upper left and make sure our Select tool is selected. The Select tool is represented by this little pointer arrow here. So we've got that selected, and we can now click this note, and then drag it down to E. Now we've corrected that note. Let's take another listen to bar 8 now. Very cool, we've corrected that and now our drum performance is almost ready. If we take another look through the performance, we can see here in bar 5, I also hit two notes at once accidentally. So we'll need to delete this note. To do that, we can either click the note directly, or if there's more than one, you can click and drag to select all of the notes. In this case, we just need to remove the one, so we'll click that, and then select the delete key on our keyboard. Alternatively, you can go up here to the top and select the erase tool indicated by the eraser here. Then, click the note you want to erase. Cool, we've corrected our performance now by getting everything in time, removing notes that were wrong, and removing any notes we accidentally hit. Now, let's talk about altering the performance manually by adding a drum fill here on the very end of the performance at bar 10. We'll begin by zooming in here, and then we can select all of the notes after beat 3. Now we can draw in some new notes using the pencil or brush tool. Up in the top left you'll see the pencil and brush tools here. The pencil tool allows you to draw notes in based on the selected note value. To select your note value, you can go over to the right and select between different note values here, like sixteenths, eighths, or quarter notes. In this case, let's start off by drawing in some sixteenth notes to create a drum fill. To begin drawing in notes, I'll place the pencil tool where I'd like to draw the note in and click. And that's really all there is to it, so now let's go ahead and fill in some more notes here. Very cool, now we've drawn in a basic drum fill. Let's take a listen. All right, and I think that works for me. Let's go ahead and grab the center bar here and drag this down so we could see more of our timeline. Let's go back and take a listen to the final drum performance now. Excellent, I think we can move on now to the organ part. Once again, we'll arm our track, then we can go back to the beginning, and then we can use the R button on our keyboard or the record button in the transport bar to begin recording this performance. Sweet, we've got both of our virtual instruments recorded now, so we can unarm the track and double click the clip to make sure it's open in the piano roll editor. Once again, we'll go down and expand the window so we can see the entire performance. Let's scroll up here so we can see all the notes at once, and we can see everything is pretty much in time. There's only a few mistakes we need to correct. To begin, let's go up to MIDI editing once more and select quantize. This also has some 16th notes, so we'll leave it as is and select OK. Now we've quantized our performance and everything's in time. However, there are a couple tricky things we need to fix, including the note duration and add in some missing notes. Let's first talk about changing the note duration. We'll zoom in here to the start of bar 3 where we see the beginning of the organ performance. To edit the note length, we'll go up here to the top and change to our select tool. Then we'll move down to a note and go over to the edge of that note. From here we can click and drag to change the note length. So we'll correct all of these notes here. and we can repeat this process as needed for the rest of the performance. If we take a look over here at bar 5, you'll notice this E and B are not right on bar 5 where they should be, so in this case the quantize algorithm was a bit off. However, that's not a big deal. We can go over and select both of these notes by clicking and dragging, and then drag them back to the start of bar 5. Once again, we can edit the note duration if needed, 
and move on to the rest of the performance. I can see here in bar seven as well, this B isn't quite in the right spot. So we'll zoom in, click that and drag it back. And we can zoom out once more to make sure everything else is in time. In this case, it all looks good. However, I missed some notes here on the end. Let's click on bar 11 and zoom in. So this is the very end of the track and I want this to be as punchy as possible. So these notes need to be both the correct length and the correct notes. Let's begin by correcting the note length. We'll drag the end here and then we'll expand this note here. As you can see, we have a 16th note followed by an eighth note. Now we could draw this in using the pencil tool by switching between a 16th and an eighth. However, that might be a little bit tedious. Instead, we can use the paintbrush tool over here. The paintbrush tool is incredibly handy for quickly and easily editing complex MIDI data. With the paintbrush tool selected, we can draw in any note duration we'd like by clicking and holding down and then dragging forward or back on the timeline. The paintbrush tool also remembers the last drawn note duration, so you can place that same note duration on any note or at any point. In this case, we've drawn out a few 16th notes, but now we need an eighth note. So we can simply click and drag to make an eighth note instead. As you can imagine, this is very handy for quickly editing complex performances. Now let's go back to our erase tool here at the top and erase those extra 16ths we drew in. Now we've recorded and edited our first two virtual instrument performances. Let's go up and scale the piano roll window down and take a listen to the final product. Very cool, we have now successfully recorded all the parts to our first song inside of Mixcraft. Now that we've covered how to record both audio and MIDI tracks, we can record the full arrangement of our song rather than just this one section. So I'll record all the parts now and I'll meet you back here in a minute. All right, and with the power of some Hollywood magic, that didn't take long at all. By this point, you should understand the basics of recording audio and MIDI into Mixcraft, and you should be ready to record your first song using both audio and virtual instruments. Throughout the next few videos, we'll begin mixing our song and adding effects to create a polished final product. So that does it for this video. Thanks for watching.